Good evening. It's Steve again, and I believe today is day four of the weather permitting pottery throwing challenge. It already feels challenging. <laughs> I am on round three of struggling with extension cords to reach out to the pottery wheel, but I keep surviving. I keep making it work even after failed trips to the store. So um, today I'm going to throw a bowl and I'm going to use this little handmade rib that I made just out of a piece of plywood. Actually, it's out of a piece of, I think, pine board. So uh, let's get started. It's always good to have a bag of clay in your pocket. So it's always good to do the ritual removing of the ring. Oh, I didn't bring my towel today. It's all right. That's what pants are for. Okay. Oh, I didn't actually make sure it works. Oh, it does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's amazing how quickly the weather has transformed. Yesterday I was shoveling a foot and a half of snow off my roof so it wouldn't melt off and flood everything. And today, a lot of the snow is melting away on its own, and see the beautiful sun pock marks in the snow where it starts to melt it. And I'm standing in a puddle. Good thing I have Sorrells. Big old rubber boots. Good to take a few deep breaths at the beginning of your throwing, especially if you're having trouble getting centered. Maybe you were late getting to the studio or to class, or maybe you had less time than you thought you had. You had obligations that you feel like you are shirking in order to do pottery. Any of those voices that are in the back of your head can be very distracting. It can really suck some energy out. And today I have a lot of those. But I'm just going to take a few deep breaths. And realize that there's not much I can do about any of it until I'm done here. So I'll just focus on this and enjoy this because this is incredible. It's kind of late evening, afternoon, and the I should say early evening or late afternoon, and the sun is obviously blazing, and it's starting to truly feel like spring. I 
I'm pretty sure we saw some birds flying north, returning for the winter, from the winter, from the south. Hard to say because they do fly in circles in that V formation sometimes, but they were headed the right direction anyway. about these little blue bats they're a little wobbly a little, a little ticky they make that ticking noise when they spin it doesn't really affect the performance or the way your centeredness comes out but it's just kind of a weird noise oh yeah that's right I can slow this down that rim a little bit and then we'll get in here with this rib and see how we can do slow it down some more this rib is nice because it creates such a uniform shape I might have opened it up too much already but Just gives the bowl such a nice roundness. So my wife earlier today was asking me what the purpose of this uh, weather permitting project is, which I think is a great question because in some ways I'm not sure that I have the answer. But I think that as artists we, well, and just as people, we have to put challenges in front of ourselves that we're not sure we're up for. And I definitely am not sure that I'm up for this. <laughs> um, the logistics of hauling everything outside just to do a pot and then hauling it all back inside is a little bit obnoxious. But I think that Putting those constraints in front of ourselves or those challenges are really formative. I think we learn a lot about ourselves. 
and we're maybe not sure what we're going to learn. And we maybe don't know what we learned until way later. But that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. I'll take this guy off and do another. If that guy's going to survive, I don't know. One of the ironies of this is that I just finished building a beautiful little studio in my basement. And it has professional lighting and a nice big wedging table as you may or may not have seen from one of my previous videos. And it's just beautiful. And then I immediately gave myself the challenge of throwing outside, and so here I am. But there's also a lot of life in my house, a lot of human and animal activity. And it's hard to ever find a quiet moment inside to record a video. So, in some ways, maybe this is... That blessing is to find a little bit of solitude and be able to just share this experience. Okay, this spot, this chunk of clay is a bigger size, which is good. I think we're going to really be able to use this rib now. And I made this just by, I just used a, a jigsaw and cut a circle as, as accurately as I could. I drilled a hole in the middle and then I sanded the edges a lot. And I sanded the insides. You can see it's, it's a little rough there. But, um, that was that was kind of all there was to it. It took a lot of sanding. Kind of a ridiculous amount. You can also buy them. But they're just a nice tool and they're kind of elegant in their simplicity. I was listening to an interview today with the winner of the TV show Alone which is a show where people go and live out in the wilderness and on purpose. It's a competition. But they, basically whoever stays out there the longest and survives wins or doesn't, doesn't tap out and ask for help, then they win. And the guy was talking about some of the things that he did were just, that were just really fun and I think most of us, myself included, even though I like to think of myself as a outdoorsy guy, which I am, I like being outside, but I'm not much of a survivalist and I don't like being alone. Well, I, I like being alone in short bursts for sure, especially when my kids are driving me crazy, but that's a different story. I would not like to be alone out in the wilderness. That does not sound fun to me. And I think I would drive myself insane. But he was just having so much fun with it, which is just such a different perspective than most of us would take. Most of us would be looking for ways to survive. And he was just looking for things to do that were fun. Like reenacting 
battle scenes on the beach and stuff. It was <laughs> really funny. But it certainly gives me some perspective. And it makes me think about this challenge a little more positively. Looking for the opportunities. Looking for the, the beauty, the fun. Alright, let's see if we can get this guy in here now. Oh, I see what I'm doing. It needs to be narrower on the on the bottom. Which is good. That's a nice shape for a nut or for a bolt. There we go. <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job of making a very simple bowl. <laughs> Let's see if I can... Yeah, I've, I've weakened it already. It's gone. for third time's the charm here. When I first made this little rib, I used it a lot. Well, I shouldn't say a lot. I used it a handful of times and it just worked out so easily. And I must have forgotten what I did. A couple of little notes about centering and sticking the, the ball to the bat. Some people actually go around, I guess you could turn the wheel slowly, and they just like, well no I guess I can't, I have to do it by hand, but they kind of smear the edges in like this. It's easier if it's not a little bit damp, but they really anchor it in. Other people will spin it and kind of smear it like that. So you're just really suctioning it to the wheel. I usually just slap it down pretty hard and that, that works. As long as it's not wet underneath, I find slapping it down. But the other thing is once you get started, just press down hard if you're worried about it getting unattached. And if you already know all that and I'm being ob and what I'm saying seems obvious to you, then good for you. That's good. And then some people choose to cone. I don't normally, but sometimes when I have a wonky piece of clay, or maybe I, maybe I didn't wedge it as well as I should have or something, I'll do a little coning to 
to mix it or if I've been trying to center it for a bit and it's just not cooperating I'll wedge it some more okay so I'm gonna do the center here and then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna think through this a little bit I'm gonna leave the bottom a little thicker because of this is kind of a steep curve up and I'll probably trim the bowl so I'm gonna bring the walls pretty up a little quicker so it's gonna be more of a V shape so that this thing actually does something Actually, let's just start with a cylinder, which is really, honestly, how you should start just about every piece of pottery anyway, except for plates. But mugs and bowls and vases should all pretty much start with a cylinder. Okay, that's a more solid piece. Now we'll just open it up a little bit. under there a little bit. I'm going to leave a little extra clay down there too. Get a good compression on the rim before things get too thin. Well, now we're talking. Now we're centered. Okay. And I think I can just go in here. Well, that's interesting. It's pushing on both sides. Huh. Maybe I'll try using this to throw a little bit too. I'll pull, do a little pulling up on the outside. Use that to support from the inside. Well, that's doing something. Do a little drizzle trick for the outside there. Maybe I'll even use a sponge here on the outside. I'm gonna go for it here. I'm gonna try and make it bigger. I'm angling the rib a little bit. Uh oh. Over there, did again. Hmm. Yep, I over thinned it again. Got carried away. I guess today is the day for overdoing it. brought it back. That would definitely, I think my sponge is starting to freeze a little bit. <laughs> Maybe not. It's just kind of stiff. That would make for some nice cereal right there. A nice rim on it. A little wobble to it. That has a nice shape down into the bottom. I'll flip it up so you can see. Has a really nice roundness going all the way down, which is nice. I like that. Well, clearly that's going to take a little perfecting, but that's okay. So 
Something like that. And you know where I'm going to trim this on the wheel, I don't need to get too crazy about taking too much of that off. This is going to be a pretty narrow bottom bowl, um, which will be nice. It'll be kind of light and delicate. So I'll just leave it like that to give it some structure right now because there is a little bit of a weak spot down right here that we don't want to overwork. All right. Give it a little slice. That's it. Thanks for joining me on this beautiful spring day. Um, maybe tomorrow when we come back, I'll have this dried enough that I can do some trimming when we come back out. And I think the weather's going to be beautiful again, so I'll look forward to it. See you later. Gotta do the snow scrub. Ooh. Ah, yeah. Refreshing. And a little puddle stump. Well, that's going to be an icy mess tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thanks. We'll see you later.